for any topic that is not otherwise on the uh, on the agenda already. Have, is there anyone here for a general comment? Okay. Um, the next item on our agenda is the approval of minutes. Uh, minutes from Matthew uh, were distributed um, by staff and. Um, I, I, would, I would move for approval. Move to the page or second. Okay. Uh, is there a discussion? Deputy, you're going to call the motion. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, now we move into a public hearing um, the, for a request for a local historic district certificate of appropriateness pursuant to section 195 of the Northampton Code. Proposed work to include replacement of 21 windows. Um, owners uh, Hugh Jones and Stephen Watson uh, and renewal by Anderson uh, for the structure at 218 Elm Street, map ID 31A-071. And um, so if you guys want to move closer to <laughs> present, that's fine. Uh, I'm hard here. Okay, well, let's go down. And, um, I promise to turn it up here. My mom is Maggie. She lives with us. Believe me, I'm used to the debate. May, may and may not be required. <laughs> okay. Some of you may have a permit application that was also distributed. Yeah. Okay. So, um, there's no, I don't know if there's a formal way to start. Basically, you submitted an application for approval of, of uh, window replacement. Mm -hmm. And who, I don't know who wants to speak first. Um, yeah, you, could we, you uh, identify yourself for the sake of the video recording? I'm sorry, say that again? Could you identify yourself for the sake of the video? Oh, okay. Uh, Steve Watson, I'm one of the. Um, Plaintiffs, no, well, one of the defendants. Yeah, the windows, um, I don't know how old they are, but they rattle, and um, some of them have, have been um, storm windows put over them. Not all the pieces of the storm windows are there. So we thought it would make sense to, um, to replace them. Our original idea was to replace them with just one over ones because we live in a beautiful neighborhood, and we look out the window, and I want to see trees and houses, and I didn't want to see little slats of wood. So that's the, our original intent on why we wanted to do this. Um, we are used to living in a historic district. We had a, a, I was saying earlier, we had a house in Dedham that was in the historic neighborhood, and um, we did everything by the book. Um, the house was built in 1740, and we did any renovation, any painting, or anything like that. So this is not an uncommon thing for us to go through. Um, the thing with the with these the house inside the house, there's been some renovation done already, and in the kitchen, which does not face Elm Street, um, all the windows that were replaced in the kitchen and part of the dining room are six over ones, and so we thought we could, you know, if if, if it's okay, if, if the idea of a one over one doesn't work, then maybe a six over one. Um, there's not a lot of consistency in the house, as you notice. I took I, I took some pictures and I and I and I printed them. Inside the house, we have one over sixes, we have uh, six over ones, we have one over ones. Um, we have quite, quite a, a, a collection uh, of windows. Um, the windows that were done most recently when um, Rachel and Chris lived in the house, uh, who we bought the house from, the all the kitchen windows, like I said, are six over ones. And just uh, the, in the front of the house, also um, in the in the in the addition that was built in somewhere around 1950, uh, the, the the upper level is all, the second floor is all casement windows which fold out, and um, we're really happy with those. We put plastic up over to, to cover the inside until we can do something more permanent on the inside with a, a storm. Um, the window below that is a six over one. So we were just hoping for the consistency in our house, um, and you know, I've looked through the neighborhood, um, and no. here's everything in our neighborhood. In um, Dave and Renee live in the house, uh, which is the, the Crown. Oh, it looks just like their house. Oh, sorry. Um, anyway, in the neighborhood is everything. There's um, one over ones. There's two over ones. There's two over twos. There's twelve over twelves. 
And then there's diamond shaped windows and um, on the top of our house there's an arc shaped window that are, uh, what do you call it when it's not? Uh, uh, it's a stationary. Stationary. Station. Yeah. Fixed. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we're just hoping that, um, you know, we can work out something with you guys that satisfies everybody. And we did go to Anderson because the windows are, you know, they're quality windows there. Um, wood exterior. So well, I'll, I'll let uh, George tell you that. So, th thank you for having me. Um, oh, I forgot to thank you. Um, my name is George Holt, uh, design consultant with Renewal by Anderson. So what we do, um, I'm sure you've heard of Anderson Windows before. Um, <clears throat> been in business since 1903. Th there's there's really two sides to our house, if you will. Everything's out in Bayport, Cottage Grove, Minnesota. There is the new construction side of the house where we're pumping out cookie cutter, stock size, builder grade units that we ship all over to the globe, really. So that's the material you see in your Home Depot, your Lowe's, your lumber yard. What that material is technically intended for is authorized general contractors building new construction. The other side of the house, Renewal by Anderson, we're the full service replacement division of Anderson. So what we do is a little different if you were to decide to, you know, if you were skilled enough yourself to replace your own windows or hire a contractor. We do everything from beginning to end where we own the process and it's all custom. So my job essentially is really easy. I measure widths and heights and plug them into the iPad and, you know, present it to the homeowner. Yeah. Um, Ultimately, when we're this is the historical commission, you're very welcome if that's what you're yep. looking for. Yeah, okay, for. great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so ultimately, after after my presentation of everything, then then what we do at Renewal is we send the in <coughs> installation project manager to the home. He measures the openings, plumb level, square, and true to the sixteenth of an inch because in the replacement world, homes settle over the years, and, and there's really not a right angle left in the rough opening typically. So what we do is we manufacture the units custom to fit the imperfections of each opening because fit and finish is, is just as important as glass performance. Once we have the unit manufactured, we do the removal, we do the disposal, we do the installation because we want to know it's done right and we want to honor the warranties. Um, my window is, is a true composite window. It's intended to look like wood. It's mortise and tenon jointed, so it's not glued at a 45 like vinyl windows are. My frame and sash lines, are the, the, the Fibrex composite material we use is 10 times stronger than, than plastic vinyl, so we can maintain a thin frame sash line so when it looks like a wood window we keep the glass area the same and uh, my frame sits behind the stop so essentially from the street it looks a lot like what's existing already so we do everything custom from the measure of the manufacturer to the install. Right. So is it wood or is it wood or is it fiber? Is it wood or is it fiber? It's, it, it's, it's a composite. It's intended to look like what you want to see it. It was helping. I love this thing. So, I mean, right, yeah. bring it over here to you folks. You'll, you'll be getting cut for it. Yeah. I'm going to punch in. I hate to have to turn around, but. Let me just get rid of the screen. So essentially, you'll be looking at the outside, which is what you're concerned with. Now, obviously, this window's a lot smaller than what we're proposing for our customer here. But so this this is a, a composite. It's 60% wood fibers and 40% thermal polymer resin. And what we do is we fuse those two materials together with heat and pressure. And then these lineals are extruded through an extrusion process, dipped into a cold bath so it hardens like wood. The color's baked right into it, so you never really need to paint, scrape, or stain it. But we're jointed here versus glued. And these sash lines are very thin to, to the whole reason why we choose, chose the name Renewal on, on the replacement division of Anderson is because what we're trying to do is renew the original look to the home. 
So sometimes that's not for everybody. I mean, like I always joke around, I, I was saying to him, if, I, if I'm going into triple decker homes where there's no furniture in there and a contractor just wants to flip it or rent it, he's not doing this. He's putting plastic windows in, but we don't. This is all we do. And can I just ask the, the grill, is that, is that in between class or is that a snap in on the, on that, the inside? The, that one's, that this one. one's in between. Mm -hmm. I have two, two of them here just, so you're looking at the interior of the home now. Right. But I have a, them profiled a couple of different ways here for the, for the customer to choose. Mm -hmm. You could do them on the glass. Typically, we wouldn't do both. It, it's one or the other. We could do both, but it's a little redundant. Um, it's just a, a, a preference of whatever the homeowner wants or, or folks like you. If you have but that other one is, is This is in, in between, between the glass. Never, and it's yep. never outside. Correct. Yep. You got it. The FDL grill. What, what is that? A full divided light grill. So that you do not see here. Um, that is where we kind would. Kind of picture with the, the We we do. Yep. So I can explain this to you and kind of give you a, a little bit of a visual. Are you able to see the stainless steel spacer yeah. between the two panes? Okay. So on a full divided light grill pattern, we would have a wood interior grill, meaning wood on the inside of the home, permanently adhered to the inside of the window. Permanently, you can't take it on and off. The stainless steel spacer then would follow the grill pattern between the glass. And then on the exterior of the window, we would have a Fibrex composite grill pattern permanently adhered to the exterior of the window. It's the only way to simulate full divided light. But other than that, grills are, I mean, they're purely an aesthetic nowadays. They serve no purpose from as far as manufacturing a sash. Back in the day, you needed them, little panes of glass mm -hmm. to create a full sash. So I always joke and say, other than my 18-year-old daughter, this is my baby right here. <laughs> No, the only other thing uh, uh, George reminded me was that when um, Rachel had the original um, replacements done, they are Anderson, they are six level ones, and they are that same composite. Um, and and they, two of them do face the street. Two of them do face I know the street. They do look. Would, uh, would face the street. We didn't know they weren't wood until George told us they weren't. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit our, about our purview. Sure. <clears throat> One is um, our purview pertains to uh, the exterior of the house that's visible from the public way. Uh, so if there, is, if there are windows that uh, you plan on replacing that are not visible from the public way, and that includes if you were to take down fences and shrubbery. But if it's truly around the corner in the back, nobody can see it literally, no matter shrubbery or fences, then, then that's on you. Yeah. Um, and you're, you've been around the historic district, so you, you know that feature. Uh, Second, I want to say thank you for being historically uh, interested. I appreciate the fact that you have some history with that, and, and that makes um, uh, it's always encouraging when somebody appreciates old house. Um, obviously, we also have no purview or interest in purview in the interior of the building. Uh, what, you know, how people uh, treat the interior of the historic house is their business. Um, once, once we're looking at windows that that are visible from the public way, then the city produced guidelines for how those windows should be uh, uh, um, treated and handled. Obviously recommending uh, repair, if at all possible, and to begin with, and uh, or interior um, uh, weather uh, uh, panels, if, uh, if possible. And then saying, well, if, if, if you can't uh, fix it, um, then here's what you have to replace it with. And all of that is detailed in, I don't know if you have a, a copy of this, you walk and look at it. Um, I, I put a, it starts over here, it goes over here. I think and I looked on, uh, on online. online. Yeah. Okay, I'd recommend yeah. you take a look at that. Yeah, we, uh, we read it online when we started the process. We have some degree of, of judgment, but we're also basically, we can't make it up as we go along mm -hmm. and we have to follow um, those guidelines. Now, what the guidelines um, 
say is, is one, that they're looking for metal clad, um, rather composite clad. I don't know whether we might have some latitude on that. Um, you know, since top right we have and they certainly um, you reputation procedures. So um, um, I, I don't think any of us are going to really question the window. But um, it does it is pretty specific about the lights and and, and it, it, it's trying to get away from um, eliminating lights altogether for the emollient demand. Wants to get away from the fake uh, snap ins which disappear the second month of installation, either intentionally or kids or whatever. Um, so it, it does want to see some degree of permanency on the lights uh, because as you know, the windows are, as they say, the eyes of the house. And, and uh, they go, they fit, they fit the age, they fit the, uh, the period of the house. And that's why, as you recognize, there certainly are all different kinds of, 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 of lights you see on, on L Street because they're all houses built at different times. Even if they're built at the same time, sometimes they're built in different styles. Each style has their own tendency towards the number of lights. Uh, we have houses from, from uh, uh, the early 1700s in that district and there are houses from the 60s, 1960s in that district. And they have appropriate and, and typical uh, light you know, window patterns. Um, uh, uh, so um, that's, uh, that, that's certainly true. We also don't want to create, it's not our job to recreate history. Uh, to uh, to make you put in windows that you didn't find when you were there. It's nice if you do. It's always great when you see uh, homeowners who who re who put in windows that are appropriate to the age of the house. That's a real improvement. Um, <clears throat> but we also don't want to see a down. We're not allowed to approve a downgrade of windows from what's what's currently there from a historical perspective. So uh, we have. There's two issues that I've been kicking around that I appreciate if somebody helped me out here for talking more than I do. And that one is number of lights and, and, and number two, if there are lights, how they're divided. Um, yeah, so I, I'm right. I can, Bruce is an architect and he's, just, he's a much smarter man than I am. Oh, I not say that. I have been an architect. I no longer have a license. Uh, anyway, um, one of the things we're interested in is the actual appearance. Of, uh, of the windows or whatever treatment. Uh, I, I'm not hung up on what kind of materials are there. There are certainly some very contemporary new materials that are coming online every day that you can't tell the difference. Um, as my mother would say, going by on a fast horse in a high wind, you can't see the difference. Uh, so I'm not hung up on that. Uh, what I am hung up on is the historical accuracy of something. And you have a Greek revival house here. Uh, it says the, the form that was prepared by the architectural historian. Uh, it's a 1850s, fairly late Greek revival in New England. But I would say that 99% of those, and if you look at the revival on that, uh, they will show uh, six over six or something like that. And consequently, I think that would be the most appropriate on the primary facades of the building uh, where you really have the Greek temple design, um, you, you, you should keep with the, the six over six. The other thing is uh, the, the texture of it. Uh, so that, that's why we are very strongly interested in having a, a three-dimensional appearance to the muffins as they come across uh, and divide the lights, as opposed to something that is simply on the interior behind the glass, you don't create a shadow line. And the shadow is extremely important because if you look at some of the, the um, um, buildings that uh, you just have a one over one glass or what's even worse is just to have a, a single glass, um, it, it just isn't appropriate for the, the period. Uh, so I think that um, uh, what I would like to see here, and I'm not sure um, where we are, and I'm sure you guys said that the windows uh, you can do just about anything. Um, but I would prefer to see um, going to the um, architectural style of the Greek revival of the 1850s, uh, the six over six, particularly on the primary facades uh, of the building, that's really the, the Greek revival style. Uh, it's a relatively simple structure. I think that would be fairly easy to do. And also to make sure 
that those are three dimensional on the exterior so that it does create a shadow line. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be real, uh, it can be applied from the back, um, and there are a lot of you know, more or less permanent installations. So you know, that would be my true thoughts and feelings on this. And I think when you take a look at the finished, the finished product, you'll be very pleased with that. When you talk about just the primary facade, what about the house? They're on a corner, so what about the house and the side? Well, I, I would say it's a part of the um, uh, original structure here. Mm -hmm. where, where's the um, other side? There's their picture. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 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 The six over one, uh, that's a 1890s classical revival um, that became much more common. And then the one over one, when they were able to manufacture the piece of glass, that's the, the manufacturer. Uh, but uh, you know, six over six over. I agree. Yeah, I can I concur with what Bruce said, and it's also in, in sometimes it's an opportunity for you to all your windows could look alike instead of. Well, that would involve this. redoing all the windows in the yeah. whole back side of the house that are six over one. So no, no, but I mean all the ones that are visible. Yeah. So it, well, it seemed to me because I was I didn't actually walk all the way around the house, but it seemed to me that there were maybe I'm mistaken that there are more than I thought on the side that isn't visible from the street. But it seemed to me like there weren't many windows in the house that weren't visible from a public way. But again, I didn't Basically, on the two sides, they're fairly visible. Yeah. Um, obviously, on this, well, the, the one that's on the Elm Street side. But even on the, um, the Harrison side. It seemed like there was some sort of on the back of the house that you could also certainly see from Harrison. You know, you would consider. Um, and perpendicular. So this is, this is the side. Harrison okay. side that you're talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. These are all right, and there's a variety of the way it was. Yeah, yeah you can see that there's a number of different styles. Yeah, there's three over sixes, and there's um, like I said, the kitchen is all six over ones. How we simulate that? The um, I was just showing the pictures. There are homes in the district that are actually oh, okay. There are homes in the district that are actually gone with um. I believe it's called True Divided Light, which for the gold fans where you yeah. actually have the panes um, that are of uh, thermal paint that are installed in a real framework. I think this, um, the, the Anderson system, which is called Full Divided Light, yep. FDL, yep, that was um, FDL, would meet our standards because it's a, for all intents and purposes, a permanent um, insulation. Uh, so I, I, <clears throat> I wouldn't feel comfortable. Uh, requiring a true divided light when, when the this when the full divided light meets the, the standard. Um, but Craig, are you are you voting on this? Are you uh, anywhere in the house? I'll vote on this. Um, my main concern is the tint of the glass in Northampton. Through the last several years, we've done so many things that are upgraded beyond the state requirement for new windows and low E, you don't have to have cool hand loop tinted glass. You can have clear glass, just like you used to have. And I think in a historical district, I think clear glass is the way to go. Unless you really wanted to have it on the side streets or back of the house, that's that's my thing. No, we never considered anything but clear. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Dave, is this yours? Yes. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Pardon? I'm glad you brought that up. Well, yeah, we see a failure there. Yeah. You go by it every day. We don't need to replicate that. Okay, you, sir, are we ready to make a motion so far? Or is this? It is a. Um, this is a hearing. Yes. Uh, can we 
help me out because I'm nervous. So uh, you're considering whether to issue a certificate of appropriateness. So for now, you only have the application that's in front of you. So we're just saying yes or no. Yes, unless the applicant will <coughs> provide the official advance. Okay. Um, yeah. Are there, are there any other points of view to be addressed? Okay, for the sake of it. Yeah, those two. There are, there are two. Here, there are two. Uh, Six level ones. I don't know what happened. Face when, Harrison. Yeah, the face Harrison. And it's going to be All right. Well, I'll, uh, for the sake of sort of moving forward, let me just try to summarize what I think yeah. I'm hearing with the committee. Um, one is you can replace existing windows with what with the light pattern that's there if you wanted to. I don't know why you want to have mismatch, but you could. Um, because we're not forcing anybody to retrofit, you know, to historicize their house. Um, you don't have to replace any windows, it's your call. Um, if you replace a six over six window, it needs to be six, replaced with a six over six true light, true divided by light, rather than a snap-in. Um, we, I'm not, hearing, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, and did anybody jump in here, I'm not hearing support for downsizing the number of lights on the window. And the city guidelines dictate that. Um, I'm happy to make, give you a copy of that before you leave. Also, like I said, we, we okay. met online. Which um, so, uh, you know, I apologize if an upgrade um, you know, issue to this, and I wish I could change that my <laughs> um, But he gave me a water cash before the meeting, and uh, <laughs> I didn't know that was a possibility. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. I'm trying to soften the, the hit up a little bit here um, with humor, but um, it does. It, they have divided lights now. They need to be replaced with divided lights. The number should be the same that's currently there. Um, um, Unless you want to improve it by making all of them six over six. If you want to make look at this currently six over one, you can stay with that. Um, but they, they need to be non removable. Um, yeah, those are ten. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, no consideration, excuse me, to, to the grill patterns between the glass? I know because those are permanently applied in there. That's not permitted in the state. Okay. 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 Yeah, just, just, just wanted to be clear. Yeah. No, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. And those are superior to the snap out uh, pattern. Correct. At least you can't take they them can't out. take them out. The right. next that's, day they will put in right. Yeah. As Bruce yeah, was talking outside. about, you get a texture of the wheel. Yeah, yeah, the shadow. The shadow. The shadow. So forth. Yeah. Really yeah. makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, the, the street uh, vacuum. Because then your real estate agent would be able to tell you. Right. Um, I mean, they look great. <laughs> There's no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. So we're, as I say, we're not going. We're not asking for the gold standard, which would be the, the, the true divided light with lots of little, little patterns, little things. individual so glass exists. patterns. Yeah. 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 Um, I know Marvin or somebody makes them, but the, that that's that's too expensive. But we do. I think we would require this. Um, and that would just be on the windows facing. <coughs> well, by law, by law. by this, by the by, by what the guidelines city has, any. So any, this is here. Yeah, anything visible from the public way. Okay. So if it's on a corner, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. you get you get two sides visible from the public way, and and if it's more than that, yeah. You get another side. No. I think it's more than those two sides. But, yeah. I think it's more than those two sides, and I was watching it. So um, you know we, we need to we need to play square on on that. So if if the other side away from the side street is um, is also visible from the portway, that would be that would be true too. So oftentimes we're left with this you know horrible back side of a house that's unaffected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be I, I will tell you that what? the back side of the yard side. If you look at the front of the house on yeah. the left hand side and back of the addition. If you took it. the tree, and you're saying about trees and fences, so if you took that all down, you could see the back of the, the, the left rear yeah, house, a lot of corner. which is which were replaced sometime probably in the 50s. Okay. The 601s. 
in the back. So we would be safe leaving those. Leaving those. You be safe leaving those? Or, we, or replace yeah. them. You we'd like to replace those also. But we're, you can replace with what's there. Which what's there? Okay. Um, okay. That's, um, on, oh wait, what am I saying? On Elm and Harrison, right? You're interested in Base the 606. Yeah. Right. There's a lot on that side that isn't going to be replaced anyway. I will tell you, if you don't like looking through a lot of mullions, you can, if you, you need made what difference it makes to paint them one color or another, a dark color, and you tend to look through them. No, it's true. I don't know looking for it. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. Okay, light color, it tends to be, you tend to see them immediately. <laughs> I didn't write this up. Uh, we'll be back to all follow it. I know. <laughs> you know that? The white mullions, they pop out. And uh, the black ones, you tend to look through. Yep. Okay. Um, You're saying painting them from, from the inside, not the outside. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, anyway, the, the way this works then is this is a hearing on your application. If if you want to just leave the application the way you brought it to the commission as it is tonight, then we can take a vote on it right now. In other words, we vote on the on the applicant's original application, and or you can amend it as we we'll say. We'll probably amend it as much as we love rejection. One, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't have to rub it in our face, yeah. <laughs> Your Honor. <laughs> you, you could be sitting here doing the same thing I'm doing to you right now. So, um, but it's and we have to live with that. And no, the guidelines. So, okay. and it's what makes you what makes Elm Street historic because yeah. it's so darn beautiful <laughs> and, yeah. and so nice. Um, yeah. And anyway, if you want to amend it, one one way to let you guys. You, you could approve it with conditions. So yeah. they, they said the conditions. conditions. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, Thanks for the ballot. Bruce, do you want to state the conditions? I, I would say that the conditions are uh, to replace, uh, as far as I'm concerned, and I will make the motion to, if you're replacing the window, uh, you make uh, two primary facades. I would prefer to see the six over six as opposed to the six six over ones. Uh, if you are repairing the six over ones or something like that, fine. Of course, they can live there forever. Um, but um, and that would be my preference. Okay. And so, if, if the motion is to accept the application with the understanding that replacements will be six over six, uh, then so much. With, with uh, the um, redefinition, yeah, yeah, with the direct right, dividing, right, right, with yeah. the, what do they call them? Full, yeah, I think full 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 by, full full by the full dividing. Full dividing. I think there's five on that. Okay, is there a second on Bruce's motion? I'll second. Any discussion? So that's. That is our that is our uh, proposal to you for uh, your consideration. If you want to accept that kind of the counter, whatever it is, um, then uh, then we'll consider that as the new proposal from you. But can I keep really for discussion? So we're not going to worry about any windows not on those two facades that might be visible from a public way, because well, there are others. Okay. You know, they're sort of like, you know, if you're walking down the street, you see some others. So it's just, I'm Sarah, just throwing that? it out. Any, anything visible from a public way. It doesn't have to be public. Okay. So, um, I mean, that's what the city guidelines says. So we can amend the motion to say any window is visible from a public way. Which is in the. Yeah, yeah which is in the bylaws. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By, by yeah you can you, you have to follow that. Um, so, um, okay, so, so amended, and uh, I guess it's up to you if you want to you want to make your proposal tonight with accepting the amendment that the yeah. is. So if they brought plans to the building department that conformed with those, right. then they would get a building permit. If they didn't, then... Yes, so, and are you, just, are you, is your so, so just, just windows, or is there anything else that you're... Oh, no, it's no, just, just, just windows. windows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not like that's not enough, right? So... So then, what 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 we would what I would do on my end is amend it as needed, yeah. and then I would talk 
with the homeowners about price adjustments for the, for the aesthetic upgrades, yeah. right? And then, um, then we would resubmit the, I guess, from my permitting department in the office, would then give you the, the paperwork that articulates FDLs yeah. as the grill patterns on the window units. So if, if, if FDLs um, and meet the grill pattern that we do. Yep, I got that 6 over then 6 FDL on any windows. We're replacing that are visible from the public way. Sarah's in the planning department, she, she will tell, yep. she will tell the um, building department that we've approved this. Okay. And it'll be a, even more gorgeous house than it already is. It will. Well. Oh, do any of you guys live in the historic district? In, in oh, we do. The person who's out tonight yeah, with the, uh, when the crew is in the car accident, Oh, you're in the district. I'm not in the district. I'm just off the district. Yeah. So, uh, no, I'm just curious if we have any neighbors that were. Yeah, there's one person. Paul Williams. She's not here tonight. Paul Williams. 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 Paul Williams.
I'm Ben Leonard, homeowner, yeah. Right. And, well, and my wife, Rebecca Lormer, is here, but just right. on their way up yeah. from the basement, yeah. <laughs> so it'll be along momentarily. Um, so the initial application, I, I refined the language a little bit, and so that's what you have in front of you. Um, and I thought maybe I would just kind of walk down through it. show and tell location of the building um, and uh, basically want to take you down through pallet and I know windows would be part of the conversation um, exterior door and so on so try to organize it sort of as how it follows um, how it follows in, in the uh, design scheme uh, and hopefully I haven't left anything else so before we get into it, you know, I just want to say, you know, we're very excited about, about moving to the neighborhood. We really we love to the neighborhood. Yeah, we, we like it. We have family around the corner. A lot of the reason is because our daughter's preschool is, is around the corner as well. And, and a lot of what we're doing is just, you know, repairing and, and making it functional for our family. Um, but we like the fact that there's a commission and, and that there are standards. And uh, so we appreciate it and we welcome kind of process here and, and we feel uh, very confident and you know right builders and kind of what they put together here so i'm going to turn the floor back it's been a collaborative effort um we we, we don't voice things on on folks we try and help make good decisions and so without further ado um what we're proposing to is what you already mentioned is in addition to the front facade of, of the building the south elevation that faces on elm street and what that would entail is, is a, a gable end bump out, basically for a covered entry, um, front door being more or less in the same location. It is the same location as to where it is now. And then in addition to a dormer to the second floor. And so um, if I can train your attention to this small sheet, there's a larger plan up there, which is probably a little bit more helpful. Um, we're talking about this addition. Mm -hmm. of this gable end with with columns and then we open so this you know covered entry and then this this dorm um, on the south elevation so that's that's a big change to the house truthfully um as you mentioned been uh, 1960s vintage um we don't know quite what to call it we want we don't want to call it new modernism or, or mid-century modern or something that it's, it's it looks a lot like a, a handful, extended yeah. ranch, or extended cave to me. Extended yeah. or a ranch, yeah. ranch cave, yeah. which I've never heard before. So we're <laughs> we're kind of shifting it towards the craftsman kind of look and feel, um, which we think is appropriate for the neighborhood. There's a well, you know, it's left and right of it, right? There's a red, uh, capish 
to the left as you face the, that elevation, and to the right is a multi-story, uh, however you want to describe it. Um, so, so that's the geometric change. Um, the garage door currently has no lights in it. We're proposing to do a panel, panel uh, mm -hmm. door system and, uh, and uh, replace the windows. So part of that palette we can come to, but I know you want to sort of think about some colors, although that's maybe not in your purvey, but nonetheless, we're talking about some neutral earthen tones uh, going with a uh, architectural type shingle. Uh, a so-called K-style gutter that will be in a color that will blend with the trim. There are currently gutters on the building, and I've tried to show those downspouts mm -hmm. in the elevation. Um, and uh, garage doors, as we mentioned, with this type of applique, it's actually an aluminum, but this is embossed. It looks like wood, won't fade, won't rot. Um, and uh, and windows, which I know will be part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. This happens to be a, a, a Pella product. Um, Anderson probably makes the same thing, so does Marvin. Um, this is a clad exterior, right? This happens to be not clad, but it is an aluminum clad exterior with uh, a simulated divided light, if you weren't confused by the other terminologies, SDL, simulated divided light, with a spacer bar, right? Mm -hmm. So that, and, and no larger than a seventh eighth, seven eighths of an inch profile, so that you get that, that look, the shadow lines that you're looking for um, in a metal. So this has to be something other than metal. So both sides are permanent. Both sides are permanent. Right. And this has to be a clad encasement. And it's, it's fairly hefty. But these will be double humps with an exterior screen. So SDL, spacer bar, and uh, that's what you see from the street. Okay. And we're proposing to do all windows and all elevations so that it's uniform through. In that, in that six over one? Six over one, yeah. which we think is period appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, interior, which you don't mind, but there it is. So. Um, that's the proposal of the windows. Um, we'll go to the next page in our color graphic. Um, a wood looking door or a wood door, we haven't really settled in which one will be yet. But basically, a some type of divided light. Um, I think this elevation shows it as a, as a six. Oh, you have a little one, right? Given the style you're running. You know. And so, given that it's undercover, we can get away with the wood door and not have to worry about fading over time. Or fiberglass that can receive paint look like a wood door. So the palette kind of giving some pop to the door, the garage door, um, a, uh, a color on the metal cladding that is this putty color, which is this chip up here, right? And, uh, and then the columns would either, either be painted or be a clear cedar. So you kind of get these earthen tones that go with that color field, you know, to kind of put that whole panel together. Um, so um, exterior lighting, that would be LED, dark sky compliant. There are not many lights there, but we're not talking about floodlights or, uh, you know, illuminating in such a way that it would wash to a neighbor or wash to the street. So something, right. something that looks like that, you know. And uh, okay. that, so you can see what that looks like as a proposal. Um, like to do PV in the future. And I know that that's something that you're interested to know about. At the moment, we're showing it on that new dormer across there. Um, and uh, that has a fairly flat roof, like 3 and 12, as compared to the other pitches. So 
if it goes edge to edge, top to bottom, it looks like part of that roof point from the street. Something about. And uh, last couple items, um, wood ceiling in that bump out for the covered entry, and then to complete the pallet and earth and tone, something that is sort of in that brown on the deck of the porch. This has to be a composite material. Bugs don't need it, doesn't rot. So that's the primer. Um, and I've dovetailed that basically with trying to go through um, the design standards item by item. <coughs> so it can be redundant. Um, I think I just kind of quick bullet points here. We just, just spoke about the new exterior door and how that would look and feel. The new dormer with the new windows. Uh, we have to do a little bit of site grading, but we're really not changing the topography uh, in any any meaningful way other than to get positive drainage away from the building to the south and on the back side that you won't see from the street. Um, there's water infiltrating the basement now. The plantings that are there will go away. They're a liability. Um, and there'll be some, you know, uh, mm -hmm. native plants that will come in um, in the future. Um, cased out gutter in a color that matches with the trim, downspouts in more or less the same locations where they are now. There's a little bit of a Rube Goldberg setup where they've got stuff connected to the back side of the house coming around to the front. We're not going to replicate that. Um, get positive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's white ABS and it's in various states of failure and so. Um, Exterior lighting we touched on, exterior colors we mentioned. Um, new roof is that asphalt. There's a big sample in the back over there. And bigger colors for the, the body and so on. They're, they're, the green how is, is the is the clapper color. We'll, we'll replicate the, this is a wide clapper, about eight inch to the weather, give or take. Um, the minced onion would be the trim colors and we would get a linen white on the gutter to sort of have that drop out so the gutter doesn't, isn't that discernible from the street. Um, the North Hampton putty would be the column where it would go and sear, but it would still have that, that earth and tone. So that would, that's what you would see in that gave the pop-up covered entry. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if I've heard, but the, the existing siding um, would be changed to match the the double sided you've got here. This this is actually just a sample for the for the what the columns could be out of a cedar. But we we propose to keep all the siding that's there and then the the bump up, the new dormer would have that same reveal. So have that same clever look. So as what's there? As or what's there. It was currently there. Is it really new siding? It's there? not. Oh it's not. Okay. I thought the form basic. Was it the basic? Yeah, okay. Yeah, the power so is not. Still they're in pretty good shape. There, there's no evidence of them failing or blowing up because you know they can get water gets in there and they can build expand. Yep. yep. But <laughs> that's not that's not what we're seeing. There is some water damage where the yeah. existing yeah. gutters have failed and we'll then that's mostly fascia soffit, so we'll reconstruct that and bring it back. But the siding's in good shape, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah, we want to replicate, like you said, that same style on the, mm -hmm. on anything additional. It looks like there's a downspout between the second and third window on the Yeah, floor. there's like three of them. That come down. So on that what's going to happen with those? You're going to see them, truthfully. They're not going to be painted to match. They'll be the same color as the, as the, um, the body of the house. As the trim. Oh. So there's no corner trim on this, um, but there is a gutter downspout at least two and I maybe through a third one and I remember seeing it somewhere on the far end. So you know your gutters will be that linen color that would would go with the minced onion. So that we wouldn't see so predominantly. Um, if you wanted us to switch to this color, the body color, so that it doesn't pop, uh, I'm not sure we can do that, but it's worth taking a look at. This is already pre-finished aluminum type system and, um, and I don't know how well it will receive paint how well it would stick. But if that's something that we have to figure out, I'm sure there's a solution. You know? um, 
question I have is the default of proposed PV array. It's only on like one third of the house. Well, I'd like to put them there and there, but I don't know if you'd go for that. Oh, that's, we have to have these high level strategic discussions. <laughs> We've been talking about this. Here is really not historic house and a historic district that's going to be remade to look actually more historic than it did yesterday. Yeah, let me, let me start off. Let me, let me say what, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. There are some historic districts that would, that would believe it or not, shake their head and say, no, no this is this is this is a period of too. Yeah, this is a more recent period. Yeah. And, and um, right. Right. Uh, it may be all about it to a yeah. younger person that was in a historic period. Yeah. Um, uh, so you, all of your changes need to fit within the existing uh, profile of housing. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get that sense here. Uh, what you will get, though, is that if it's going to change um, its, its, its whole being from a, 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 a cake to a somewhat uh, aristocratic era um, structure, it needs to be done very historically sensitively and 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 uh, did not look like a, a tract house with a with a, a uh, arts NAAC slap on covering that that we see all too often. Um, so it needs to be needs to be done uh, as accurately as possible. Uh, and I think, I think this is this is you made some really good efforts here, and we appreciate that. Um, but um, you know, our challenge is you you're proposing massive changes. If you see the amount of time we spent just with windows uh, with, with, a, with a neighbor down the street and, and you're proposing a, um, a whole new, um, uh, whole new uh, look to the building. But having said that, um, um, I, I don't think that any of us look at this house as being so unique or special or unusual or um, uh, that, that it's, it's not worthy of considering massive change. and, and uh, um, maybe it was a, there, there were a lot of houses like this in, right. in, yeah. in the area. Yeah. Um, the um, but there, if, if you are going to be changing it to an arch and pass era, then you should do it right. And, and the, having tapering columns is a good idea. Sure. Um, the plinths should be appropriate for the for the size of the column. The door should have a level on it. Um, uh, it should be wooden uh, because it's under a covered. Uh, uh, a roof. I don't think you have to worry about constant sun baking, which is maybe a good reason for a fiber or composite door. But with with the protection you've got there, then um, a wooden door. Yeah. And if it's, it's because of the era, because of the time period of uh, arts and crafts, if it's um, a wooden door, I would consider it splurging okay, because they celebrated the wood itself, yeah. uncovered yeah. and untainted, and and it's a great time for a mahogany or or. Um, uh, uh, of course, I know. Um, so uh, I would up, up to you, your budget. But I would encourage, um, I would encourage uh, wood if at all possible, um, and that, that the style of uh, panels there is, is appropriate, and that that looks good to me. Um, but if you get a plant with little supporting brackets underneath that just small wing or saying yeah. uh, that would look that would look great. Right. And that's the wooden supporting brackets or what? what are because the the, the plinth is a, it's a carryover from what, what you'd see in the dining room of a house of you know that area where where you'd have a um, wainscoting all around the dining room with a, with a small rail uh, plate rail above it and there'd be little tiny corbel brackets that would support that rail uh, as it went around the room and, and so the plinth on these doors would look uh, does, does it sound like I enjoy the AMC period? I can tell. Uh, um, I'm waiting for the recess. So that's the point there. <laughs> um, now, um, the, the, the covered front porch, the, the, would you call it the, the architrave? The, 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 the yeah. pediment over the inside, the, right. the, the gable, and is that board and batten? Is that board and batten's over shown? Painted to match the uh, exterior the side. Bo the body, yeah. So it's, it's, it's changing texture. Yeah. Right. 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 We played around with change of color, change a uh, different, maybe a sh shingle or a shape kind of look. Okay. Yeah. We, we, and we're you know, somewhat open to options of what yeah. you guys think will be 
appropriate. most appropriate. You know, that's, mm -hmm. We wanted it to be subtle and not, <laughs> you know, like. Well, I mean, in, 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 I think it would have had more brackets. It would have been a, sort of a little bit more complex, but a little hollow inside there with the, um, and, and the, the, this roof would have gone up into it, so it wouldn't have been mm -hmm. flat panel. Um, it would have been more pronounced. Yeah, you know, a little bit more of a shadow line into it. Um, yeah. also, also, I would suggest that the whole concept of the, of the column in our architecture has to do with, with, with its coming from Earth and, and its stability and its solidity. And so you want to make sure that there was no minor element down underneath the, the column. It, it should look as though it's it's incredibly powerful and massive. and Tight to the Earth. Yeah, so that you may, you may be putting a, a grill a, a lattice in there. Um, so that wouldn't necessarily be there, but I would, I would carry the mass of the column right down to the ground level. If we could. Sure. Um, and I, I certainly, you know, I, I applaud you moving to a garage door with lights um, on it. That's great. Um, I think it just increases. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a nice feature. It's a, obviously not an historical feature. Uh, if the house of that area would have had the garage around back, not not visible right to the front, but um, you work with this back, yeah. and so um, I think I think it's a very nice treatment. Uh, and if that's if that's fiberglass, that's fine because you need to be lightweight. And they have amazing doors like that now. Um, yeah, we're looking at a couple different things. fiberglass ablation or early uh, in class with with that type of that type of finish on. Okay. We wanted to tie to kind of the tone of the other browns and yeah. the wood elements, yeah. so as long as we can get it uh, in line with, with the other things. Um, I don't want to dominate the conversation too much, but do you have other comments? Well, I just want to remember replacement windows. I think what's there now, was it 8 over 12? Yeah, was something. I, think, like I thought it was 8 over 12, and I just didn't know, if, is that okay to just completely change that? Yeah. Yeah. And for, for this, for this year, I mean, for this yeah. look, yeah. and this is a yeah. six-hour yeah. one is actually okay. That's good. Yeah. 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 Okay, I wasn't well, sure. I so. no problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but the, 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 they, they tend they tended to have fairly wide um, uh, exterior frames that are, that are fairly flat. Um, Um, and if you put that again to the bottom of that front entry weight porch, I would specify real, um, uh, was it one and eight, one and a quarter by half lattice, wooden lattice rather than any kind of final part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'll be see here. I mean, Miles has it, but it's, it's good stuff. It's expensive, yeah. but <laughs> we'll probably build it up from scratch if we do. We'll, probably, we'll build it up from scratch if we do it in the center, yeah. you know. Yeah, I just want to talk here. The original structure shows shutters on the three windows. Your drawings show no shutters. So you're not doing shutters. That's our intention. Good. That was not our foundation. Oh, good. In theory, the shutters should be designed to close over the window. And there's no way you can do it with the double windows on the door. Uh, to make it look any other than Apply the yeah. 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 There's no plumbing sacks on the front, is there? I don't paper? think so. I right. think the rear, there's the bathrooms in the rear. We will keep them to the rear. Okay. Because the scale of what you're proposing doesn't overwhelm the mass of the existing structure. It's not like it's a second story. And, and we played around with that, and, and kudos to Nancy Schwartz, who truthfully is the designer here. I mean, we all had a hand in that. We, we studied at a larger a large dormer. We, we looked at maybe doing a dog dormer to the to the right and just ruled it out. Uh, so that looks pretty cool. Yeah, because in the neighborhood, you've got, you've got peak dormers, and you've got some shed dormers, and this is about the only house that doesn't have right. either a second floor or a dormer, so. It's felt left out all these <laughs> centuries. Well, I wouldn't answer for more about it, but I always, uh, <laughs> I would oh, say it's 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 won't it's look it's out of, it won't look out of place, right. which is part of what we're doing. Now, let me ask you, this is a homeowner question, yeah. architecturally, 
you don't need to have gutters. Um, and I'm, I'm, especially since you're going to be tearing out those ewes, um, you can put in um, about, and you can contain it with some aluminum uh, lawn edge, you about a 18 inches or two, 24 inches of good crushed rock right alongside the, the foundation. And the water comes off the roof onto the crushed rock, and then you put your planting down a little bit further. The idea of, of, of planting in right, right against right. the house is a fairly, um, people didn't, didn't do that. Take a look at, yeah. um, you know, um, uh, upstairs, downstairs, or, I mean, uh, 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 what was that, the one with the English? Downtown. All the, yeah, yeah. All, yeah all, all the great houses, there's nothing against the house. I was going to the Fireside Theater, I didn't know where you were going. Um, but um, <laughs> the, uh, the notion of putting you right against the house tends to leave a lot of rot, a lot of uh, uh, to create places for uh, it leads to uh, intrusions into the basement by roots. Um, yeah. So if you put um, crushed rock and then continue with a nice, uh, good, you know, steel or aluminum lawn engine, the rain can fall right down on it, and and you're, you're not cleaning um, gutters in a half your life. It's worth considering. Wow. Okay. I would. I, I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah, it is possible as long as we, you know, we regrade in such a way, mm -hmm. and we could probably put a, a fabric underneath the soil so that yeah. water's not, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. seeping and, and really and and much better. They it's attempted just, to do that with what's there now. No. They're not also not historically accurate. I mean, a lot of most houses didn't have. If they had gutters, they were wooden, uh, and uh, right. they all rotted out. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. they're they're out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a thought. Yeah. <laughs> So put them over, put them over something that you know, like over a uh, doorway or something like that, where you, you don't want to get rained on. But uh, right. elsewhere, right. yeah, you know, you've got overhang. You, you don't. It's not like the water's going to come right into the house, or you don't have a gutter. Thank you for that. Thank you. I just want to say that I mean I'm no great fan of the current style, yeah. particularly in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It's seems it's kind of flaring. The change in it, um, but I'm not absolutely convinced, entirely convinced that I, I want to say like the asymmetry of this works because in Arts and Crafts I'm used to seeing that entry in the middle, and I realize it's kind of in the middle of the whole mass, mm -hmm. but it so it makes it look. You know, Bruce was saying this wasn't didn't really look, just look like you were sticking an Arts and Crafts on something else, but. To me, partly it does seem like that because it's it's sort of half one way and half the other, and I, I'm not. But again, it's hard to visualize when it's flat on the plan. I was just going to say, you're it's, I know it's going to look totally. And actually, you know, even looking at the side views, right. it looks really different. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, and and that may just be an aesthetic on my part, but I just want to make sure it's really going to that it is going to be right to. And, and again, because you do have those two roofs on either side that are just going to remain those um, roofs, even if you eventually put solar panels on them, and they're still going to be that that profile and that angle, just big blank expanses. The house is perched so, a little bit. I mean, it's elevation relative to street. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see yeah. a larger picture back. That yeah, photograph that's true. Back yeah, there. I went, I went the other day. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. So I think, set back well you know, and as you, as you enter the driveway, I mean, there's no dedicated pathway, but I think, you know, having that punched out to the front is going to... Oh, gonna, I think that's really, I agree you know, that's going to improve the look. I'm just not sure that it all works together. But. We did a house in Village Hill, the, the front door is asymmetrical and went around and around. And so yeah. we ended up putting a window where the door would have been centered and then back with it. Huh. As a, I'm huh. not proposing we do that here. Huh. But, huh. Um, which, which house is that? Um, Do you remember Paul right? Jonas. Um, oh, so I know that house. You know house. So, um, yeah. I think, I think. I was going to say, I walk by the house a lot and I've yeah. never said, oh my God. <laughs> How could they do that, right? <laughs> It obviously doesn't bother me in the black line. So next time you go by. But next time I go by, I have a look more. But it's different, you know, it is a porch that is yeah. full. Much full, wider porch. And yeah. that, I think that tends to yeah. temper that a little, mute right. that a little bit. Right. But um, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be successful in the end. Um, or I wouldn't have proposed it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and finally, you, you again sort of taste the, the, the um, and I hate to insult anybody's personal choices in lamps. Um, 
you, you, the hardware part of this is good. Uh, the, the, the shade is a little bit modern for, um, you can try to really shoot it for uh, an arts and craft uh, period. Um, it's the, but, uh, yeah. but the hardware part, what, are you? No. I'm, I'm agreeing that we can find another lamp that has more on that. Okay. Um, I'll, 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 I'll look. Uh, there's a place out in Seattle with uh, amazing uh, recreations. But um, I think I know the one you're talking about. Um, Bill Austin, architect Bill Austin, turned me on this. Okay. So I would be yeah, looking for something that's a little bit more, more, sure. more clearly derivative and, 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 and echoes the March Cut period. Um, again, the, the, the bronze colored um, top of this looks okay, but the, the lens. It's a little too skinny. Yeah. It's a little light. It's, it's a little um, thin. Uh, lightweight in, yeah. in, in scale for, for that period. Um, well maybe you can help them find that. And, okay. and the, the, the LED, uh, that won't be a bright white. They will be able to eliminate the front porch. Or the eliminate the front porch and tape, yeah. yeah. But, There's different temperatures in those now, um, and so you can get them so they're a little more. You have to start bright white light. The uh, 404 in, in the looks great. You like uh, that touch? Yeah, that's nice. Thank you, Nancy. The, the small right. windows there. Yeah. Yeah. And there's one tucked up um, to where the new stairway will go yeah, up. So, the, so, you know, it brings it right around. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. I think that kind of integration of the yeah. will, will tie, nice. tie it in. You know? um, Other comments? So I think we're in the same situation as the previous applicant that you watched and heard, um, where if we had to accept this just the way it is, um, uh, which is the, the simplest way to address this, and not the way I want to address it, but we probably say, well, come back with the changes we, we talked about. But I also don't want to slow you down by a month. So uh, can you? If we were to, if we were to put together all of these thoughts into one proposal, can, are you in a position where you want to say yay or nay that you can approve them? Are you to accept them uh, yeah. tonight, and that way yeah. we can move forward yeah. with this decision yeah. tonight? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right then. So let's uh, let's try to summarize all the things we talked about. Um, can I ask one other question? Oh, of course. Just since um, this was brought up um, about your windows. This thing about them being low ER done, is that a not clear window or just okay. I wondered if you were in a, if that was gonna come up. So I, all of a sudden that yeah, that popped out of me. I'm just you. curious. So you, you want the, the long story or the short story? I'll keep it. Uh, probably the short, but right. go ahead. Yeah. Well, we want the explanation. So, so low E is low E is a coating that goes on the glasses, you know. Right. Right. Low E massivity, I think, if I pronounce it correctly. Um, and you can have different coatings depending on you know elevation in this case um, the street view is the south elevation and that's where most of the sun is and so the reason those uh, coatings were put on is, is twofold is to cut down on solar gain um, and also to keep uh, furniture and carpets and wood flooring inside from fading so um, if if required to go clear we would I wouldn't recommend it um, but uh, is it, uh, it's, so I, I think that it'll be uniform in the entire house. Um, this is not triple glazed, which would definitely have a color shift. Um, you know, uh, so I, I don't know how discernible it would be, truthfully. Yeah. So, not that much. Particularly if you have the continuity on all the so we've done houses where we'll have different coatings on four different elevations. That's not, I'm not proposing you do that here, but um, so. And that house is fairly obscured from the street because of the tree line yeah. distance from the street. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you'll get some reflectivity. Um, the fact that it's a, you know, a divided light will definitely telegraph that looking feel that you're on. But if you remove the shrubbery in the front that's blocking lots of that window, then those windows are going to be more noticeable. Right. But you have some plantings that, you know, that will go in after the fact. Um, not invasive so you know do you know if any of the you were talking about some of the housing village hill do you know if any of those have this that low e are not they all they all do so they all do. and they're all triple blazed where's that village hill which which would you say makes for a dark more of a different color you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna color shift for those yeah. okay. but uh, i think those were largely built before the ranks changed the ranks changed fairly recently that you don't need tinted glass in North Hampton. You can go clear here in order to meet the standards. You don't need tinted glass. As long as you hit the energy standard, yes. That's um, because the city as a whole does that. And so they've relaxed the requirement of the cool hand yeah, sunglass screens. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, let's review. Um, what we discussed this right. evening, I do the general support approval of the plan, um, and um, I'm not hearing any major opposition to either the concept or the manifestation of the concept. So that, that's all really good. And so what we're talking now about was, um, um, let's see. Would be the, clad, the, the metal clad window 6 over 1 as, as, as proposed uh, for, uh, well, four fixed on, on, on the, the three windows all together, the two under the, under the roof and one um, um, at the top of the roof, at the top of the siding, um, using the either the existing siding or, or matching existing siding. Um, um, ensuring that there's, that there's adequate coverage of the of the porch deck uh, footing using uh, purchaser manufactured uh, or you know, site manufactured uh, trellis and providing some foundation to to that trellis um, um, so that you don't get any sort of see-through quality under under there. Um, the door uh, is. The only, I would say I really would rather not see a plastic door. Right? Me neither. You know? <laughs> yeah. well, it's I mean, it's, 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 yeah. it's going to be a beautiful yeah. house, and yeah. you don't want to ruin it in any way. You know, yeah. that's, that's, that's the pizzazz yeah. feature there. Yeah. Yeah. I had I had on a yeah, yeah, option or quarter saw yeah. an oak or something yeah. along okay. that Okay, yeah. And with, if, with the lentil, if, if you can. Um, and. Um, I think the colors were okay with everybody. They looked, they looked reasonable. It doesn't matter if you're not. Yeah, we right. got a really good yeah. purview of the colors. Right. Right. But we haven't done uh, ugly. Right. <laughs> good call. Yeah, it's true. Good call. Um, and while we can't choose your shingle colors, you're, you're, you're proposing a normal kind of shingle. So great. Yeah. Not our call. Uh, we appreciate the, the, uh, style of, of riser that you're proposing there that will look very nice um, and um, I, mean, I, I think uh, and, and there won't be any any roof protrusions uh, visible at least on the on the front the, you know on the, on the, the side of the roof peak towards the street uh, so the stacks in the back, back which would set up well for the deep yeah. as you went to um, homeowner will consider uh, better better needs, perhaps reduce if necessary. That's that that's voluntary. It's your call. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, why do you want to be up there cleaning out gutters? Yeah, they're doing uh, right now. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What else, folks? Right. I think you touched I think you five or six bases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and oh, and you'll look if you look under arts and craft lighting or yeah. mission yeah. era lighting, something like that, you'll find 
there's a number of companies uh, that do it, but once again, you only get to buy one of them. It's, it, it'll be a little expensive, but it, it's your showpiece, you know. It's, yeah. it, 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 yeah. it's what you see from the street, and so it pays to get something that is a little bit of a statement and, and is as historically accurate as possible. What I'm trying to prevent is it just shouldn't look like that. What I would call a track arts and crafts, you know, it, it doesn't, it won't because it's in good hands. But um, you, you want the part of the arts and crafts era was to, was as he thought was to use really high quality materials and, and to celebrate the materials themselves. Um, um, so um, you know, you don't want to have anything that's, that's too cheesy, right? Where the public will see it. You can do that run back. <laughs> Water up versions. Yeah. yeah. Um, that makes sense. But I think you're, I think you're getting there, and it'll be nice. Yeah. I, I like it in pulling out some of the, all of those, those big, uh, the views that are up front. They're just, they're not going to do your foundation any good, and they're going to, they're going to shade the windows and. Yeah, um, yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah. You pull something. You got a lot of yard out there. You can even right. plant some nice, right. very nice specimens out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, other, other thoughts, comments. No, thank you. So if if um, if those are if those are acceptable to you, and and you want to do, I guess I I would I would laugh because I didn't take a vote last time. So uh, we'll take a vote on this one. Uh, all in favor. So there is a move. We don't have to move. We have to move it first. With all of the things you just said. Those it's, it's, right. So I was uh, Is there? A, I'll make a motion that those uh, conditions be approved. Is there a second? Is there a second? Is a discussion. There being a whole vote. Is there? <laughs> yeah, can I hear a vote? Uh, uh, a voice vote for those all those are approved on yes. uh, those conditions. Uh, and uh, um, so, if you're willing to live with those conditions, and yeah. very mild, yeah. uh, yeah. we think it'll look pretty nice. And uh, um, I don't know, but if there ever was a an old house there, uh, but this. Yeah, that's a good question for Sarah. Was there anything demolished to create this? No, this was a larger lot uh, that belonged to the house next door that was sold off. The yeah. house to the right. Yeah. So, yes, the white, the white house. Yes, yeah. this, this is going to be an improvement, and uh, thank it you. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we appreciate the consideration and and some of the suggestions. I think we're at, at to what we're doing here. So thank you. Thank you. What are you going to do with the bar and the basement? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're keeping that. Yeah. <laughs> this, this fits that's a spot called the wooden bungalow or expanded by yeah. the wall. No. Furniture. The furniture yeah. disappeared before we could even oh. ask for it. So <laughs> well, I recommend you get uh, take a look at a magazine. Yeah. Popular description called American Bungalow uh, that has um, uh, a tremendous you find a community guide on this kind of style and also uh, good sources of materials that you might have to enter the house with or how to paint the house. That kind of thing. Yes. It is called American Buffalo. It's not cheap, but it's quarterly and it's very good. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of residents <laughs> that are I know. Could you tell me? I do. I got more. Yeah, it's okay. It's good to have the kids on very nice. You guys see the bathrooms? There's a retro yeah. tile and wallpaper. And like the boomerang pattern oh, on, yeah. the, on the counter. The counter? Yeah. I can go through that. Boomerang pattern. Okay. Bringing back memories. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we move ahead while you go over your examples? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm good. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next item on our agenda number six is a review of proposed solar panels on the Sargent House 82 Green Street. Oh, that's not us. That's not us. That's not you. Skip that one. Okay. Skip that one. Are you skipping? Skip that. No, no. We are definitely not. We are the VA. Oh. <laughs> you with the VA? Okay. We are. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's section seven. This is section 106 review 
building demolition veterans affairs medical center. Um, as you may or may not know, and support the front for a casualty to the center, um, it is an enormous complex um, with all different ages and far larger than you imagine. Uh, it's like 40 buildings up there. Yeah. Um, and the buildings that are being considered are the buildings that were used as housing uh, originally constructed for housing from the nice from the looks of it. They were fairly nice for, I assume, uh, medical officers or medical uh, personnel. Uh, are there the little, little brick houses on the way in? No. They would do five side by side. They would do side by side. Except for one. Yes, they were all duplexes. Or nice. they are. Or they are quite, quite nice housing. They are. They're they are. They're necessary for attracting uh, uh, appropriate staff to the um, And they, they've been used for a variety of purposes since that time, including subsidized housing or for. Uh, they were used for homeless housing, transition housing, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and they have uh, apparently um, lived their useful life and the, the uh, be able to now have permission to take it down. Correct. So just for some background, um, our oldest building is from the mid-1920s, built after World War I for you know the care of the veterans and has been uh, added to since then. Um, we are really trying to maintain the campus, which as I said, has about 40 buildings, as best we can with a very small staff. And so we have to make some decisions. And so we have uh, 12 buildings in our inner oval um, that we have committed to keeping as historically accurate as possible. We just finished putting a slate roof back on uh, our building nine, which was our tuberculosis uh, ward at the historically. Um, and, and putting in uh, more accurate um, historical windows, which were replaced sometime a couple decades ago with some really nasty aluminum uh, windows. Now we're replacing all those windows with uh, like a white aluminum so that they look more historic. Um, and so we're really committing to keeping these 12 buildings as close as possible while still maintaining uh, you know, the level of care that and code compliance, like adding elevator towers and those sort of things that are required. Um, so the rest of the buildings on campus, some 20 odd ones. I, I was here about three or four months ago talking about the removal of these 12 small buildings. Um, we have since taken down four of them that were the safety hazard that I spoke about. Um, the, other, the other eight will come down um, as part of a larger project. These are um, six buildings along our Front Hill Road. Um, we are requesting to take down five of them. The sixth one, as part of the conversation last, um, last time, mm -hmm. was to create a museum. And so we have proposed that Building 22, which was the old Medical Center Director Quarters, so it's kind of the building that, um, and Gordon, I, I think I spoke about Gordon last time I was here. Gordon has done the incredible <laughs> amount of work um, gathering documents, putting them into a display. Oh, no. um, it's been interesting. Okay. First guy's name was Appleton. His first name, Appleton. Can you imagine going to a, like, a first name of Appleton? <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So he's been putting uh, the newspaper clips as well as photos from the original construction in our uh, main hospital building for veterans and visitors to see. Um, and so we would, re we would keep 22 and we would put the displays as well as some physical items that we've had and collected over the years into, into this building. Um, the other ones would be tear torn down um, and would be replaced with uh, these long-term nursing home pods, um, which would house about 10 veterans per pod and then we could connect those with some uh, communal support buildings. Um, but unfortunately, the, those, build, those five quarters that we would remove, um, for many reasons, cannot be rehabilitated. Um, number one is they're not ADA accessible in any stretch. Um, and so to make them so would be monumental. We did a cost-benefit analysis about 1.5 million per building mm. to make it compliant. And for that square footage that they would provide, it's just not um, a beneficial use of our taxpayer funds. So, um, 
So we are asking to remove them um, mainly for that reason. Mm -hmm. But we would keep this this one, and we would renovate this one. The museum. That's interesting. Yeah. Talk about the museum. We'll talk about the museum. So um, we would probably only be able to make the first floor the museum. The second floor would be um, the, our voluntary services offices, which would support the museum because of the ADA access issue. We wouldn't put an elevator in the building. Um, and I don't know, Gordon, if you want to talk more about what we would put in the museum and how we might display some of the... We actually items. have, well, there's a fireplace in each one of these places, first of all, pretty nice. And we have some of the trinkets, the, the uh, little shovels and things like that to take care of the ash mm -hmm. from other buildings that we could bring in there to we could make, make it full, make, make it complete. But I actually have the top ball off the water tower when we took the water tower down. <laughs> Contractor was going to throw it away. I said, no, throw it in the woods. I'll go get it later. <laughs> so I, I got the top ball off the water tower. I got nuts and bolts from the, the supports of the legs. We got the data plate. I got a lot of stuff that we've collected. We have an old vault uh, that is in the out of the basement of Building 1, and we've been tossing things into that every time we find something that's historically significant. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit of an open issue, too. What is historically, you know, it's sort of like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, there's something. You know, <laughs> you don't always recognize yeah, it. Yeah. Just the other day, we found a, a wood plaque that was inside uh, Bear Hill Gardens um, greenhouse, which we also plan to take down eventually. And I said, well, we got to grab that when it comes time. Mm -hmm. So. Um, these things will end up in the in the first floor, basically. Um, Close your displays. Talk about your displays of the newspaper articles and the photos. Oh, that you've well, I've been um, going over the first of all over to um, Forest Library and scanning the old uh, Daily Hampshire Gazette um, articles, and I've got a bucket full of them. It's amazing what's out there, and um, I'm putting those things in display cabinets that are in the basement right now, building one. I think that's going to have to stay there. I don't really see a lot of people traipsing through this museum. Um, maybe we could bring them over there and show them things. Certain, but, but to leave it open all the time, I think would be a little bit of a weirdness. Um, a lot of people now just walk back and forth in the basement and they come by these things and say, oh, and they get to look at them. So uh, leaving the display up in the basement, I think is important anyway. Oh, building one, sure. that's our main building. But there's right, tons of old pictures. You're about preserving a duplex, right? <clears throat> uh, uh, no, the medical center director orders building 22 is not is the only non-duplex. Okay, so the, but that's it is the one you're preserving. Correct. Okay. Um, so I, would, I would think that in addition to you, sounds like you're doing a great job with artifacts. Oh, and, and, and those artifacts should be preserved. The other thing that I should think would be interesting for people to look at is, is what life was like if you were a medical officer at the at the hospital during that period, well, what did your kitchen look like? What did your bed, what did the bedroom look like? Not all of that you can perhaps make accessible because of ADA, but just something about daily life. What was it? Because some people put in long periods of life living there, um, and, and it was often more Spartan than what we think of today is, is because they have fewer possessions and fewer, you know, closets and, and their kitchens weren't yeah. fancy and so forth, and they, they, they led, um, um, good, here. good but simple lives, and and um, not surrounded by lack of luxury. Um, and if, if one of the, the unit was preserved to show what it was, what you know, a typical medical officer lived like, um, in this, then that's in addition to the artifacts that you that you yeah. that curated. And that's great, uh, but perhaps they're sort of separate thing. One is things that are interesting that should not be thrown out, and the other is more sort of like mm, the social history. Mm -hmm. of, of what it was like to, to be one of the people who were giving their lives to, um, to the veterans who were uh, 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 housed there and being served there. Um, just a yeah, thought. we were planning on changing the interior of the outside of removing the lead paint mm -hmm. because um, it's just falling and it's just it's just a mess. But yeah. Um, yeah, there's been no changes to the inside of the building, the best I know. The yeah. wood yeah. floors are there, the mantle for the fireplace is still there. Yeah. It stayed the same on the yeah. kitchen. Might be a little, well, little bit changed, but not appliances. Not, but not, not our, it's really not our purview to tell you what to do with the museum. Mm -hmm. I'm just sort of suggesting that oh, we've got yeah. a great, a great, you know, just a great social history. That, that I mean, great we walk in Florida it creeks. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's good. Oh, well. <laughs> I mean, that that was our plan. And the other thing that also came out of our meeting last um, time was a formation of VA, VA historical committee, um, which we have since done. We've had two meetings now. Um, and it was actually quite a bit more turnout than I expected. 
Um, but we've talked a lot about how um, boats mitigate, um, you know, the removal of these buildings, like to maybe put up some plaques as where the buildings once stood, where their foundations were, um, to and with a picture of the building, so that we can, you know, have some walking uh, paths where the where you know these buildings were, and people can see where they um, once stood, what they looked like. Um, so that came out of the committee. So some really great ideas that would be relatively easy and and cost effective to implement. Um, and also we talked about how to capture a lot of the oral history that's out there that's, you know. Beautiful, um, beautiful. Yeah, so. Just on, on, you know, just on audio files and you right. can preserve, you can archive that. That's yeah, great. and we're really working on that and our, our VA librarian is also a big part of this. So, um, you know, talking about archiving all of this, you know, great material. But we've had a lot of, we have a lot of employees that are, have worked at the VA for 40 plus years and we need they to capture what they, what they have. That's great. Yeah. So, um, un you know, fortunately, unfortunately, in order to grow the campus, in order to make it pertinent and usable, these nursing home um, beds would be the most, you know, way to make us relevant. Um, we are losing our amount, our, our population of veterans, um, just because you know Western Mass in general is, is and then Springfield and Worcester in particular, um, are where the veterans reside now. And so making Northampton more of an inpatient focus, both with um, long-term care as well as with inpatient mental health, is really where we're trying to go. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you have to have the state-of-the-art um, you know, units. Well, and, we're certainly not trying to stand, yeah. stand in the way of the excellent service that right. you all provide or, or the progress that you need to engage in. So don't worry about that yeah. but we are we, we certainly also applaud your creativeness and your, your willingness to talk with us too about yeah. along the way preserving uh, uh, what you know what has come before the piece and of I think people should be interested in that um, because it's a, it's, a, it's a community of people uh, you know I don't know how many thousands of people want to work That's there right. at one time but yeah. huge I mean it was like uh, you know, another example was the Northampton State Hospital right. uh, that, that, that was what everyone thought of it towards the end was once a, uh, an amazingly rich and thriving community of people. Um, so anything that you can do to preserve the memories and, and, and recollections of that era or, or, or the era that's accessible anyway through, um, um, through the current uh, employees uh, is wonderful and we, we applaud you for that. So I think you're, you're having a historical committee that meets regularly is fantastic. It's really to be commended. We've done a very nice job with that. And then having collecting audio files or having home people that maybe if you set up like a drop-in space like every, um, you know, you could go and sit down and you could dictate into um, a computer your recollections. Tell people to bring some notes so they don't go on for three hours. But uh, on the other hand, you want to collect as much as you can. Why not? Yeah. Um, and then uh, you know you put a put a make sure it's all labeled nicely, and some doctoral candidate will make a dissertation out of it someday. You know? well, and, Gordon is about to retire, so he wants to take this on as a project. So there you go, yeah. Gordon. That's a great project. And we've actually yeah. talked about it. me and uh, um, Rick yes. Services um, yeah. Yeah. chief have uh, talked about that. Yeah. Um, some of the people you don't even know this, Josie. Um, a friend, um, Karen Zanari is one of the people. She's been emailing me left and right. Uh, she put me in contact with uh, another guy, Mike Bagley, put me in contact with the granddaughter of the, the of Pat Calipari, who was our band leader way back when. And I went up and saw her, and she gave me another picture. So, I've yeah. never seen this picture before in my life. And I'm even, if you don't, even if you don't know, <laughs> curate and process all of this yourselves in your lifetime, you're preserving it for, for, yeah. for future historians who to look at. And we value those people. So, well, um, and our grounds have also been the site of a lot of different movements, especially in the mental health. And so, you know, kind of documenting that and bringing it inside Building 22 so that people can come in and see, because they, they, they can't necessarily walk all the grounds now, I think yeah. would be helpful too. Um, yeah, so we are definitely trying to work on getting the uh, community to come and, and document their experience. That's what the historical committee has been starting to talk about, how we can get the word out to get some more involvement to figure out how to really draw um, these memories in. 
And then at some point, there's also a how to catalog our collection. Um, uh, our so that even if we don't process it and curate it, we can at least we can, we can have it there available for historians in the future. Yeah. We are working with uh, Forbes Library because they are archiving most Dylan, of our photos. Dylan Gaffney is normally yeah. here, and they, 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 they have come there. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they know me too, too much, I guess. So, yeah. 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 so thank you very much for what you're doing. and. Uh, I would, I would say keep up with the collection of artifacts and preservation of artifacts. And I would also just suggest that if you can do a little bit to preserve just the simple social history stuff. You know, the day to day, I mean, if you're walking in one of those, one of those, those buildings in 1951, uh, after the you know, Second World War, what would it be like living there? Or if you were there in 1922, after the First World War, what would it have been like? And because uh, uh, that's, that's, that's your almost irreplaceable ones. Once um, people's memories go, so um, that would be lovely. Now, as far as your question tonight, can you tear down? Is that the? Are you here to? Propose? That's that's what the um, the memo was about specifically. Okay. Yes. So, so our role with this, because it's a Section 106 review process, is to make advisory comments to Mass Historic as to whether this has an adverse impact on the National Register District. And, and anything else. To commit, we assume to commit, that it will. To commit, yeah. we, we know that they are going to come back and say, yes, you made an adverse impact on the National Historic District, so we already recognize that. But what uh, we're asking for is what are the mitigation circumstances. Um, we are prepared to do you know, the HABs level documentation. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, we are prepared to do that, or we, we are expecting that um, for you know, just yeah, as a baseline. We can't say there's no. Yeah. It, there's no adverse effect. Correct. Obviously, there is, but we can say that we're, we we hear in your proposal that you're, you're mitigating that that negative effect to the preservation efforts and 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 cataloging of and creation of um, of audio files and, and picture files that will uh, we feel um, ameliorate the effects of the of the uh, uh, teardowns of the other buildings. I think it's unusual. It, it, you're really to commend it because it's a lot of hospitals or other institutions would have just tried to wipe the slate clean, and you're really trying to do uh, the right thing and 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 focus your preservation efforts. Well, I think what's nice is we have a lot of employees as well as um, families of patients, and sometimes our employees are families of patients that really have an invested interest in maintaining the historical nature of the campus. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not certainly not me. It's it's Folks like Gordon and a lot of other employees years. who have been there a long time who really care. <laughs> it's changed a lot out there. Mm -hmm. The yeah. water tower came down, we cried. <laughs> that was a landmark. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. And there's nothing we can do to go back in time, but I think moving forward, we want to maintain um, the inner core that everyone sees, that everyone goes inside, that everyone you know is their first um, review into the facility. Um, and not, you know, dilapidated buildings that we can't maintain. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and speaking of that, just I know we probably are, this might get us off topic a little bit, but um, Building 9, which is the one I was saying we replaced Slate with Slate, we're about to replace the windows with more historic looking windows. Um, our associate director did ask me to ask you if there was any commendation or something that, um, certificate that, that you might be able to provide just for us to you know generate some positive news about what we're doing on campus with our construction to say so Northampton you know applauds you for maintaining your buildings in a historic manner uh, I'm not sure what you would be able to do but he did ask that I ask so that we can tell our veterans that we're doing a lot of good things that make a difference and where are those, where are those windows going? Or this is a building nine, so it was actually it used to be our tuberculosis building, oh, um, our tuberculosis ward, and um, so we are. It's, it's at our far end of campus. It's been vacant for quite a while. I'm not sure how many years, but we're completely renovating it. New roof. Um, we're removing the lead painted fascia and soffits, but replacing it with a PVC um, sculpted uh, profile that looks very similar to the mm -hmm. original historic model. Um, we're replacing all the windows with- Are these uh, energy efficient windows? Yes, but they are um, clear. Yeah, so, yeah but um, I, um, I realize they're tinted ones. I'm, my other suggestion, I mean, uh, if you're looking for some positive news from a city kind of a group, 
replacing that many windows on a large building might seem like something that the Conservation Commission would want to um, applaud you about because uh, you're of the energy the conservation feature. Um, I mean, that seems like people get what they call evil or something like that all the time. Um, we'd have to take a look before we before we celebrate it for its historical uh, quality, which we, we conceivably could do. Um, we want to take a look at it, look at Absolutely. the plans. Uh, but if you'd like to throw some. I can send Sarah the packet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can look at it next time or something. That'd be great. Preservation awards. Right, right. We, we do get preservation awards. And yeah. if you take a historical, uh, historical building and you take pains to, oh, I'm sorry, if you make every effort to, um, uh, uh, take every effort to replace uh, the windows with um, historically accurate windows, then, then um, and, and we're always on the lookout for commercial or, or institutional buildings that, Okay. Uh, people have helped like that, so okay. we, can, we, can, we can help you that way. Yeah, that would be great. What's, Sorry, to return. What's the use of building mowing? Uh, what is it now? What, what is it going to be? What do you say it was the TV or the TV war? Historically. Historically. Um, I'm not sure what it was after that. What was it after that? The last um, we had some patients in there for a while when I first got there. Um, just, just Random and patients. Yeah. 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 And, and now it's going to become the... Um, it's a new clinical model, the residential rehab uh, treatment program model um, for our PTSD ward. Mm -hmm. huh. and, and so what's really incredible about Building 9 um, is that we are going to be building a separate women's wing, which we don't currently have. Good. And so Good. we'll support five women veterans per cycle that will really hugely you know, improve our access and our mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. So. And the new college, the nursing home pods that are being built are going on the site of the buildings that are being torn down? In and around, yes. Mm -hmm. And what is, was there a building 20? I didn't see there, 20 on there. There was and is, and actually that one was um, previously slated for demolition, and we have removed that from demolition and are making it, um, doing a complete renovation project um, and making that our uh, employee admin and call center building. Okay. Um, so we're not demol demolishing that. The only thing that we are doing, and I don't think, Sarah, I sent you that packet in time to get, I think that one was one that had already gone through Mass Shippo and they had no adverse yes. effect. Um, but that one, because it is kind of far off the main circle of campus, um. we are um, replacing the slate with a uh, synthetic uh, plastic, which <clears throat> honestly, I mean, even up close doesn't look any different. Um, it's a lot lighter, but uh, it'll be a green, um, similar slate color to what we're putting in Building 9, but it'll be a synthetic material. Um, but otherwise, we are putting in more historically accurate windows back uh, into the, um, you know, kind of junky aluminum ones. And um, interior-wise, we're completely gutting it, but the exterior will remain very much the same except for an addition of an elevator tower. But it's, it, is it a duplex as well? Oh no, I'm sorry. It's, it used to be the old nurses' quarters, yeah. and so it's it's more like a hotel. It's um, a 21,000 square feet on three different floors, so it's it's huge. Um, uh -huh. 7,000 square feet, feet or so per floor. Mm -hmm. So if you'll give us um, details about the renovation, it's, if it's being done to try to reach historic accuracy, we'll be happy to review it. Okay. If I mean, if from everything you you described. We, if you're happy to consider for an award, uh, that we give annually. Um, so anyway, uh, so you're looking for a vote tonight on the, on the, um, for the 106? And whatever um, other mitigation measures, um, okay. obviously, you know, the documentation will be something to pass along to SHPO, but I'm sure that's already, 99.9% uh, um, positive, that's already on their list. Mm -hmm. um, is there any, any guidance you want to? I mean, you could just indicate that it's definitely an adverse impact, but we look forward to working with the VA on all of the things that we talked about today. Okay. And so there's just nothing else that can be done to save at least one of those duplexes? Well, this is there. The, same, the one you're saving is the same style, it's just not a duplex. No, correct. It's, it's, the, same, it's the same style, it's just not a duplex. It's, so it's we. Smaller. 
Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's smaller. Um, we looked at a number of different things, and as I said, we used to use it for this homeless, homeless transition um, housing that we uh, soldier on, which is currently still on our campus, mm -hmm. and they refused to use it um, because of its condition. And uh, so it really gives us a, quite a tight squeeze. Um, they, there were a couple other options that we looked at. Um, I guess there's a program in, in, in Massachusetts where, or maybe, maybe might have been not Massachusetts, it was a historical consultant from North Carolina that was telling me about it, but where you can rent the building out for very low rent to a historic person who wants to, who was willing to use the rent to maintain the building. Mm -hmm. And we thought about this and I passed it around, but at the end of the day, this, these buildings are right on our campus. What happens if this person wants to have a party? What happens if we shut down the campus and they can't get on campus because of the security requirements mm -hmm. of our, you know, we're going to about to put a perimeter fence, well, we're not about, but probably in the next two years we're going to be required to put a perimeter fence in. So just from that perspective, um, you know, what, what if they drank and draw, drove on campus? I mean, we, we don't, we're not. You're going to higher security? We're not allowed to do yeah. this for the perimeter fence? Yeah. I mean, um, it would only be uh, locked in times of national security, oh, oh, okay. force protection. Well, I was going to ask, I was, I had a question in the other direction. That is, uh, uh, linking yourselves in more uh, completely to the current rail trail and, and hiking trail systems. Um, to uh, to make it be more integrated with the community, we said it was one of the nation's experts on rail trails. And well, they did connect it with the park and ride lot that right. yeah. faced traffic okay, like exactly. that. So that's. I, mean, I know that the driveway is going out, but I also didn't know how safe that is for. Well, we see. We have sidewalks. Yeah. Really nice sidewalks, I mean, I mean, actually. And the traffic light is zoo down there too. At the right. We see a lot more patronage on the trail system with the veterans that are living. Yes. In but we did we did look at a number of different avenues and for those two being the biggest ones was the homeless um, use and then uh, you know this kind of conservation can't remember what it was called but um, just for those for two different reasons they were just not feasible um, well I think I think the sense I'm getting is that um, we will recognize that we wish that not all of the buildings the, the are building being taken down, but they, the, 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 the center is taking um, good, very good faith efforts, energetic efforts to um, create a historic preservation center that will um, um, conserve um, a variety of information from artifacts to, to stories to um, official histories um, uh, which mitigates the impact of, of the loss of the building. And we can say that. I would just say, you know, please explain to your superiors that, that we really do expect that historical preservation center to exist for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And this is not, a, you know, not something that should be part of treated casually in any future planning. And, and uh, it needs to have a place at the center um, because the center is not just its current format, but also its history. Um, so I, I would want that to. To, um, to be you know, seen as, a, as, a, as something that, that the center treasures and, and, and is committed to preserving. Um, I concur. Because yeah. if you came to us and said, we want to take it all down, we don't want to take save any records, we want to get rid of all the old artifacts, we want to, history is history, and, and you know, we'd probably say, well, you know, we don't think so. Um, but, but the reason we're giving you to go ahead on it is because you're doing some great work. Um, and I just wanted to see that recognized and preserved too. Any other comments or ideas or suggestions? Okay. Um, we've got far beyond our, our normal uh, closing time, but it's for a good cause. Um, so, if should we take a vote then to approve all this palaver? Uh, <laughs> Sounds <Bruce>, good. Okay. <laughs> the, the sentiment is we need to get out of here. So, um, we will support the project. Uh, support the, the, the uh, uh, taking down the other buildings um, given the, the veteran center um, um, activities before we start, start preservation on the site. 
I think the buzzword we need is mitigate. Yeah, which serves to mitigate the adverse effect. Is it a simple majority that will affect the rules? Is it a majority of the people here or that? We have a quorum, if that's right. We have, and it has to be a majority of this quorum. Oh, so you, that, you have a proposing thing? Well, I, yeah, I just kind of feel, oh, I just don't know. I just mm -hmm. don't know if we've done enough to put it out there that these buildings are going to be torn down and that if there was an organization out there that could use them for homeless you know, part of a homeless shelter, homeless campus. You're talking about moving them? Yes. That, They're um, brick. They're brick, right. It's a very, very difficult proposition. Yeah. And In the packing mm -hmm. like when Smith has had houses that we could have that were even wooden, mm -hmm. the problem was nobody was offering mm -hmm. lots. Mm -hmm. They're um, also uh, contaminated with asbestos and lead. I mean, not that you couldn't remove them and then right. move the buildings, but they are, that would be expensive mm -hmm. beyond just moving them. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we, we have right. thought about that. We did, uh, by the way, just to add, just for the, of the 12 buildings that we were talking about last time, we did advertise two, or we did try to advertise two of those greenhouses, and they refused to advertise them because of the asbestos and lead and the requirements to remove them on a VA campus. You can't just come and remove them. You have to have workers' comp and all these other federal requirements. Jesus, thank you. Davis, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's really, I and mean, we, we had these be this beautiful bowling alley, mm -hmm. and we tried to, we, for about four months that was advertised, and there we had three buyers, and not one of them met the qualifications to remove the bowling alley, and so now we're going to end up tearing it down, but some, we're going to preserve some of that for the museum, but mm -hmm. just, you know, everybody wants to use it for their house, but they can't, they can't come and take it unless they need all these rules, so, unfortunately, it's just, it, I feel as frustrated as you do on that mm -hmm. aspect of it, but there's just nothing I can do mm -hmm. on that end of trying to get stuff moved off. Mm -hmm. So I, I just did, I didn't know if it was for the record, if I voted nay, yeah. was there still are there still it enough would, votes to it carry would, it? It would be, um, I think, by regular Roberts rules, be the only voting member of the people who are here today. Um, okay. And um, so the majority would rule here today. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Terry, you're well, probably I'm Terry. basically just asking to be involved in the process of going forward, sort of unfortunately admitting that the Historic Commission on its own doesn't have the power to say, no, this, this can't go forward. You know, even if the commission didn't send a letter to Mass Historic saying, you know, we appreciate some of these efforts, it, they're going to come down anyway, but the, cons the commission just wouldn't be a consulting party. So if there's anything you want to add to our correspondence, I would frame it that way instead. Well, maybe just putting in the obstacles that have already been encountered, um, you know, with other buildings, just so that it doesn't look like we, you know, kind of heart blanched it um, along the way. Part part of the um, due diligence on these five specifically, not on the previous twelve, was looking through the McKinley Bento Act, which sees who else could possibly use it from a federal agency perspective, which is all that could use it on our federal land. Mm -hmm. And um, that came up mm -hmm. blank. So we, we did do that and that was part of the, the package for the federal side of it, which didn't necessarily go to the historical commission, but we did mm -hmm. do a whole. Well, I would certainly say that's good to know. Certainly say that we appreciate the efforts that have been made to either try and market these or find a reuse, mm -hmm. and we also understand the complication, mm -hmm. complications of mm -hmm. the federal regulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't aware of all of that. Yeah, uh, well, no, that's good to you know how far to go there. <laughs> yeah, if they're, if they're if the pillow that's best does some blood pain on yeah. the the most appropriate place to put so a person who is So historic buildings are. Right, that's all of ours are. That's we're the just nature of it, their age, yeah. Okay. I mean, the ones that are, that we're trying to preserve, we're removing the asbestos and lead and, mm -hmm. and then right. repairing it. It's mostly on the inside. I mean, there's window caulking, and but that that is easily removed without destroying anything. But um, yeah, I mean, for the ones that we do have, we are removing that and preserving mm -hmm. what we can. What would you like to do? I, I really don't want to ride a rush out of room, but No, I just wanted, you know, I wanted to be sure that um, everything was, you know, that they'd already explored all the options mm -hmm. and um, 
I might have been absent from the meeting that you had three or so months ago. Um, I don't think I was here. Um, and so I just wanted to be sure that, um, you know, you know, that options had been explored and mm -hmm. due diligence done and um, this is what we have. Okay. What do you think? No. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm prepared. Yes, that's fine. I'm satisfied that, okay. yeah, that this is a difficult, um, you know, the nature of it is difficult and the fact that it's um, made even more complex by federal um, uh, guidelines uh, makes it pretty much uh, impossible you know, to save uh, the buildings. And these are the last on our campus. I know that I've come the last two times to talk about demolition, but these are the last two, or th this is the last that we plan to demolish anything from now on. It's just trying to figure out how most cost effectively, effectively to renovate. Um, and there will, there will be a lot more coming up, but they're all about renovating and mm -hmm. preservation. So and is the more one that you're saving, um, Oh, the one that you're saving that was not in the in line. It is. Oh, it is right in the middle. It's in the well, middle. Well, 17, 18, 19, 22, or 21, 22, and 23. So okay. no, it's kind of t towards the top. So of the being hill. it's not a duplex, is it half the size of the? Absolutely. It's half the size. So why are you preserving that one and not one of the duplexes? That's a great yeah. question. So we, we kind of went around and around because 17 is the other one that we could have preserved because it's right on the other end, which is one of the smaller duplexes. So the reason we did 22 was um, was the medical center director's quarters. All and so there's... Well, all of them. All of them. I mean, it was that's who it was. The first five. I've been able to figure so, that out. So we have um, newspapers and pictures of people who actually lived in this building right. and can actually point to you know some history of this person standing in front of their quarters. I think um, you have a couple, right? Appleton how Pierce coming up from his house walking through the front gate. Yeah. It doesn't have him right in front of the house, but but it's it's so obvious that he's walking to work. The angle of the sun is just right for the morning coming through the gate and right back there is his house. He's got his, Briefcase and suit coat on it's going to work. So the other ones are not um, as, you know, they're nurses' quarters or medical officer of the day quarters. Right. So they're, they're higher management doctors and things like that. There, it's less that we could pinpoint somebody that lived there. So when we were talking to some, I don't remember who it was that we were talking to, when we were kind of going back and forth between 17 and 22 to keep, um, from a historical perspective, they said if you can tie that to somebody who actually, to a historical person that lived there, that will mean more. Um, I do have a couple pictures of mm -hmm. people in front of some of the quarters, but I'm not sure exactly what quarters it is. Mm -hmm. um, there are names of, and pictures of some of the other people, but mm -hmm. they don't handshake right yet. Mm -hmm. So, it's a so we, 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 we kind of made a judgment call on that one um, from that perspective that we could tie actual people into this building. Mm -hmm. I was ac actually able to match the slate mm -hmm. on an old picture to the slate on one of the new buildings to determine it was 17A and not 18A, 17B and not 18A for quarters. I was actually able to match the slate patterns. Gordon spent a lot of time. Yeah, you were on this. Yeah. Doing a lot of. Good work. Good work. Okay. So, I mean, so, so that's the reason why we chose. It was a judgment call, but that's the one that we ended up going to because of that. In the long run, it probably sounds as as we talked so like the. You're never going to have a big flow through of, of, of people visiting. It would be more of an archival center. For you to and, and for special displays, and certainly there's yeah. a couple people that are really interested that would love to just go through it. But for the most part, Building 1 will remain the main display for everybody because and everybody goes through it constantly. Right. Um, and we might have some moving displays through some other buildings as we kind of get them up and running and, and have you know more space to do these mm -hmm. um, displays. But I think the... Building 20 will become more of a, a, a space to to archive them that we can make. Um, uh, 20, you meant 22. I meant 22. <laughs> um, that can be more uh, temperature and humidity controlled. We can make that you know a priority for when we redo that building, and then um, also a space for all these larger items that we can't mm -hmm. store in the hallway, um, but that if people were interested, they could come and look at. And you know, Gordon's pretty committed to. I actually, actually thought about giving some tourists, 15 or 20 minute tourists. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's employees out there that have no clue. We had a fish pond down the front of the VA. Um, I, I, I just found it about, about a year and a half ago and I was dumbfounded. I thought the only pond we have was a 
was up front. That's not true. There's another pond that was stocked by, by Great Barrington's fish hatcheries. And I get, got, got a little newspaper clipping about that, and I'm thinking, mm. I'll, call, I'll call those people up in Great Barrington. Well, I did, but it's all run, run by volunteers that I, have, I haven't contacted anybody yet. I'm going to drive up there and find that daggone place. <laughs> One of these days. <laughs> so it, well, it, um, it just I grows and grows and grows with this. Yeah. Stuff. It's a lot of stuff. Mm. Well, are, you, are you okay with yeah, well, yes. I really don't like to have this quarter. It really is not intended for No, I, no well, we'll, we'll always have, you know, people who don't have the same opinion, but... Okay. Uh, and just to be clear, this isn't a demo review process right. because this is the federal government. We're not allowed to, to, do it. to consider a, de a local yeah. demolition mm -hmm. re review. So mm -hmm. all we're doing is, is saying, yes, this, this will certainly have mm -hmm. an adverse effect on the mm -hmm. National Register okay. District. But we appreciate these efforts yeah. and we'd like to be involved. Yeah. Right well, we would do a demo. <coughs> well, thank you for staying so late. And, and um, thank you for having us. Do we have a sense? Do we, is there a vote we need to take? Or did, have we uh, taken I feel like that there was a vote. I, no, I mean, that's we fine. Can, <laughs> basically, just sending a letter summarizing okay. the that we talked about the past right. story. So, okay. if somebody wanted to move that. I move that that letter be sent to uh, yes. the Mass Historic. <laughs> Yes. Okay, all those in favor, to move and second it. Uh, okay. And discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> fine is, is work, okay? Um, and uh, I think that's it. Okay. Thank you very much for all your efforts up there. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll read you some of the CPD, but nobody touched the mark. We have like another minute. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just stretching. <laughs> okay. Um, we have other items on the agenda. No, I don't have anything that is immediately pressing. Everything else can wait. Can, can I say something? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Update because we did have a fundraiser for the information thing with, with, and I gave a couple of tours around the, um, the hospital campus. And this was really coordinated with several people from Village Hill, including uh, Beth Brown, Hatsby, and Ellie Maripol, presumably, I mean, primarily they, they headed this committee and they got other people involved. And um, uh, we had some music and we ended up moving it inside because it was quite a chilly day. This was the, tw yeah, just last Sunday. It was kind of chilly and the musicians weren't going to be able to stay out there all that time. And plus people, nobody was going to want to be out there for a couple mm -hmm. hours. So I did give the tours, but that was fine. And, um, uh, but, um, I mean, I wasn't, because I was giving the tours, I wasn't really in the room, and Christopher Heights offered their meeting room for us, which was great, and we set up some refreshments. They made some refreshments, it was really great. And the community, the Village Hill residents raised, it was more than $4,000. It was, so close and to I, $4,100. Yes, and I received, uh, I received more since then, which brings it to about $4,500. Oh, well, so about $4,500. Their goal was they were trying to raise $5,000 at this point. Mm -hmm. We've also had other contributions of at least another 2000 Plus, well, I guess plus five from ServiceNet before. So we've really gotten a lot of support from the community. Joe is actually, I think, this afternoon was meeting with somebody at L3, I always call it Cole Morgan. There's a new person there, so maybe somebody will finally come with that. But it was a really great response. There must have been 40 people um, sort of at various right. times wow. that, that turned out for it. So it was really one the biggest turnout we've ever gotten for an event there. And there's a lot of enthusiasm, and they're all Probably, you know, we just have to contact them in the spring. They'll all either do one letter of support for the CPA and all sign it or Fantastic. come and talk about it. So they're really behind it. Yeah. Very, That's very good. Um, I mean, even Beth Graham, actually, I forget her husband's name, but he came out because the city, you know, didn't move Bob, that he came out with a weed whacker. <laughs> and you know, a couple hours before then, he, he cleared, I said, well, let's just at least clear a path up to the fat bowl and then a little bit around it just so people could could yeah, see yeah. it mm -hmm. and we mount and I got a big picture thank you Sarah for that Sarah for this oh, big sure. picture of Martha's plan and we well, got blown off but people could still see it Maybe, you know we get attached to a stake and when I arrived there and the door was on the ground and then you put some rocks on it to keep it from blowing away but it, it really worked out fine people were, were really well, really pleased well done. Well done. they were really pleased so I just want people to know about that. you
That's really great. So they just about okay. reached their goal. Is that last year? Just keep it official. Yeah, yeah, it was the 20th or 21st. Um, so. I would like to propose that we table the rest of it because of the hour. No, and we'll be any item. Unless there's, is there anything that we must deal with tonight? Excuse me. Sure. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Um, then we'll table everything else until our next meeting. Um, <coughs> and uh, move to adjourn. Thank you.